Welcome to Black Sea Audio's Guide to Acoustics. The very first thing to do without messing around is chop the audio spectrum into two different areas. There's bass, which is everything below about 300 hertz, which is... And there's everything else, which is everything else above 300 hertz. The reason we do this is that the two areas are different. They act differently, they react differently, and they have different effects on both us and the sound itself. First, bass. Bass sounds verily romp around a room in the form of waves. Whereas treble and mid frequencies pretty well act like rays of light, hitting and reflecting off surfaces at the same angle at which they hit it. So let's look at how we express and quantify the acoustic attributes of a space and decide on what might be good or bad for any given room. The best, simplest, oldest, easiest to understand, internationally and universally adopted and understood way of quantifying an acoustic space is to note its reverberation time. This is expressed as RT60. The R stands for reverberation, the T for time, and 60 for 60 decibels. So we end up with maybe a reverberation time of 1.3 seconds. That would indicate that a sound takes 1.3 seconds to decay to 60 dB less than its original value. Practically, 60 dB means that we can no longer hear it. So that sound would take 1.3 seconds to decay to effectively inaudible. And this is what that sounds like. What is a recommended RT60 value for a given room? I hear you ask. Well, there are several answers. In years gone by, when acoustics was pretty well in its infancy, it was reckoned larger rooms should have longer reverberation times, while small rooms should have relatively short reverberation times. As often happens, we've had a complete rethink on that one, and now reckon it's got more to do with the type of music or the sound than the size of the space. So for example, a room for live classical music would need quite a long reverberation time, even longer for live choral, whereas say a classroom where speech intelligibility is important would need quite a short reverberation time. Practically, current recommendations would suggest something along the lines of 0.4 seconds for a home cinema, while a concert hall for classical music would need an RT60 of a little greater than 1.5 seconds. Actually, achieving a particular recommended RT60 isn't so crucial. You can deviate from that quite a bit, higher or lower, so long as the balance between the RT60 in the bass is good with everything else. Failure to do that and you will definitely end up with a room which is bass light or bass heavy too dull or too bright. Looking at the graph, a home cinema or hi-fi listening room would sound great if the RT60 fell anywhere between the yellow trace and the purple trace, irrespective of the absolute RT60 value. In contrast, the blue trace shows an RT60 curve that would sound awful at any absolute value. Okay, so we know about RT60. Now let's move swiftly on to the one single most important and fundamental area of acoustics. It's our old friend bass. Bass, as soon as you put it in a room, and because of its wave-like nature that we mentioned earlier, gets up to some pretty naughty little tricks. Basically, it resonates. The frequencies at which it resonates are dictated solely by the room's dimensions. 
and the frequencies at which it resonates, will overhang the general reverberation time of the room by a long, long time. This means it's easy, even quite typical, for certain bass frequencies to overhang as long as 2 or 3 seconds. Or to put it another way, in terms of pop music, you could be hearing the room effects of a bass drum beat still effectively playing the bass drum beat some 2 or 3 bass drum beats later. This all adds up to a wodgy, mushy, ill-defined bottom end, complete with robbed dynamics. Not a pretty sight, and not a nice thing to listen to either. It's a sad fact that very few people, even among audio professionals, have even heard a room with its resonances controlled. So, here's a demo. If you were actually concentrating on those two glorious little snippets of Fleetwood Mac, you would notice that on the second version, the one with the room effects removed, the bass drum actually had definition. For many years, it's been suggested that rooms with a particular length to width to height ratio, the golden ratio, will have the best bass performance. This is only partially true. What actually happens is the room resonances are spaced evenly, so you end up with an octave, octave and a half, maybe two octaves of bass poo-poo to deal with, as in the blue trace. On the other hand, if you forget about shunting walls in and out here and there to gain a golden ratio and just live with the room you've got, you're likely to have an RT60 response like the yellow trace, which also happens to have the advantage of being easier to correct, since there's a smaller target to get. A smaller problem, a smaller target, easier to correct, and you don't have to build a room a particular size and shape. I rest my case. Moving on from bass, the everything else area of the audio spectrum, that's mid and top frequencies above 300 hertz are a little less critical and difficult. First, the effects of a drastically long or drastically short reverberation time at these frequencies is less damaging. Secondly, it's unlikely in a normal room with some soft furnishings for there to be such a dramatically long or short reverberation time in the first place. Normally, we would consider there are two in inverted commas, worst things that could happen when mid and top reverberation time is either too short or too long. The first, in the case of a mid and top reverberation time being too short, is that it exposes the bass end problems even more, resulting in a madly bass heavy, ill defined, squadgy bottom end. The second worst thing that could happen would be where the mid and top reverberation was rather long. This would result in a very splashy sort of sound. Might sound great in some respects for some places, but for home cinema or for serious hi-fi listening, it's really not at all good, and would sound a bit like this. <laughs> Another issue in lively rooms is you may encounter discrete echoes, which have the effect that you're listening to now on my voice. But don't panic. Normality is restorable, and a mere hop, skip and a jump away. We'll start with bass, and remember, we have to treat this differently from everything else. The first thing to realise is that the room will give you some free, accidental bass absorption all on its own. This is due to the construction of the room itself, 
and the amount of flex in the walls, ceiling and floor construction. This happens when they vibrate, being forced to move in and out from their normal rested position by the sound itself. This vibration in turn is wasting energy. The audio energy is being turned into physical, mechanical energy and heat energy. And so, the audio energy is effectively being used up. This accidental absorption, and so acoustic treatment, generally happens in the upper base region. That's the yellow section on the graph, and is around about here. This is all very well, and actually quite good news, but does leave room resonances at lower frequencies exposed. That's the red section on the graph, which is round about here. Unfortunately, with the frequencies involved being so low, you can't rely on accidental absorption and have to turn to specific, designed, low frequency absorption units. Fortunately, of course, we do have an answer. Rats, or resonant adjustable trap system, are our own invention, designed specifically to combat the problems of low frequency room resonance. While there are many other ways of treating low frequency resonance, we are confident that rats offer the most flexible, lightweight, cost effective, space efficient, tunable passive bass absorber system available. Here in the everything else area, that's mid and top frequencies, controlling reverberation time and echoes is achieved with what we call porous absorbers. General soft furnishings will all act as porous absorbers. However, carpet is your best ally. In fact, in a typical room, with wall-to-wall -wall carpet and fairly normal domestic furniture, the mid and top reverberation time will be just fine and need no further treatment at all. Should a fully carpeted or fairly domestically furnished room still have too long a mid and top frequency reverberation time, once again you'll have to turn to more designed and specific solutions. By far the cheapest and easiest material to use is rock wool or fiberglass thermal insulation. Both of these are a nat tadger away from being perfect absorbers. They can be finished in a variety of ways with fabrics, printed fabrics, perforated sheet materials and so on. But be aware, when you cover this, it will alter its absorption characteristics. And also, even more aware, that placement within the room is crucially important. To just effectively park a lorry load of rock wool in a corner or at one end of a room will not make it work. However, to make a room sound absolutely any way you want, all you need is these two treatment elements. A good, preferably tunable base absorber and a good porous absorber. Use enough of them in the right place and you can obtain exactly what you want.